All right, guys, welcome back. Survival Living here. So today I want to discuss preparedness. I want you to be working on your preps. Now, there's plenty of things going on across the world. All right, we see military movement. We see things going on with bases. We see a new missile system developed. We're seeing a lot of this stuff. But I don't want you just to be freaking out and preparing for World War III all the time. Because the fact is, we don't know when things will happen. Do I believe it will happen? Yes. Do I know when? No. Nobody does. What I want you to do is work on your preps normally. But I also want you to work on your skill set. Okay? It's one thing to stockpile food, which is a great thing. And I recommend stockpiling food, but don't have it all in one location. Have it in multiple locations. Many reasons why. 2012, I had a house fire. I lost everything in that house. All my preps, everything. Fortunate for me, I did have some preps in other locations. That's food, water filtration, extra cash on hand, things of that nature. Something that if I lost my position, I had somewhere to go and get supplies. Very smart idea. Please make sure you do this. We've shown everything from putting uh, stash, stash buckets. All right. I learned that from um, Praxis Prepper. Actually, Praxis is a good friend of mine. He's the one that actually got me into that. Is actually putting buckets in the ground. Now, of course, it depends on your location and your frost level and stuff like that. If it's if you're living in Wyoming and you got five feet of frost level, it'd be hard to dig that bucket up during winter time. So it just depends on your location. But yeah, if you're putting food and supplies in a bucket, make sure it's below the frost level. What that has done is it's insulated, basically made a mini root cellar a closed environment that you can put supplies in. I do support this idea. Like where I'm at here, uh, our frost level is eight inches. So you want to make sure that you're about eight inches below that frost line. So it'd be 16 inches in the ground. Put the bucket down in there. Cover it up. Make sure you know where it's at. Me personally, I don't put things on maps in case someone else gets hold of it. <clears throat> now, I want to talk about skills. Please work on skills, not just stockpiling food. It's great having a stockpile of food, but what happens when you have to move from location? Or your supplies are destroyed. What happens then? You're relying on skill. We teach a lot of outdoor survival here on this channel. And I'm not just some ass clown that's up here telling you how to survive with a knife in the woods. Yeah, right here with me, man. Okay. Tell us I'm, when you're live, brother. I'm live. All right, guys, here we are at the Pathfinder School with Survival Living, just patched the intermediate class. If you want some good information, check his channel out on YouTube for sure. Good job, man. All right. Perfect. I can edit it. I can cut right there, man. Fucking Sean, man. So that is the Pathfinder course run by Dave Canterbury. I uh, went up there on the fly. I trained for a couple months myself, watched a couple guys that had already taken the course, so I kind of knew what I was getting myself into. Trained my body up and went and took the course. That is the intermediate scout uh, class. You have to take that before you take the advanced class. So I went in, I got my paperwork, I got my patch, and got to meet a lot of great instructors up there. Uh, Corporal's Corner, uh, Tony Powers. I got to meet a lot of great people there and I built a bigger community with other bushcrafters and survivalists as far as the students go. Turned out I've got great friends now because I took that course and I went through that with them. Now you don't have to go and take a course like this, but I do recommend giving it a shot. You'll learn a lot. you learn a lot about your body, what you think you can put yourself through and then when you actually have to go do it, whole nother story. Now, me, I've always been doing this stuff. I've taken many courses throughout the years, and actually, we just closed down our business, but for a year, I was running my own outdoor survival course, okay? I want to teach people as much as possible. That way, when it comes down to it, they can survive. And the only way to do this is not by watching videos. Yes, it's great information. You can take that information, and you can practice off of it. But you have to be out there practicing it. It's not just sitting, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not just sitting and watching a video. You have to push your body. Now, back to pushing your body. 
I got hurt a few years ago. I had to go through uh, a few surgeries. I had a shoulder surgery, knee surgery, and I've got messed up disc in my back and at the top of my spine, right at the base of my skull. I, I live with that pain every day. I got hurt on the job and had to, went through physical therapy and stuff for a year. During that time, I gained a lot of weight. Actually, almost 260 pounds during that process. I'm a welder by trade. I've been doing it for a very long time. I've worked everything from North Dakota out there in the weld, out in the oil fields, working shipyards. I'm actually back into welding now. I've been back at it again. Working your body, pushing your body is a huge prep. And I know a lot of people don't like to hear this. Lifting, exercising, getting back in shape. Guys, you've got to be able to rely on your body. Now, you don't have to go and do like I did and start slamming weights, build an outdoor gym and all this. That took me a long time. I first started out with uh, center blocks, a pipe, and used that as my bench press. My bench was center blocks and a board. That's how I first started out. Push-ups all the time, sit-ups all the time. Before you get into your regular workout, exercise please go talk to your doctors all right your heart is very important and the fact is my heart was going through a lot of stuff i got electrocuted years ago and it messed up a lot of stuff inside my body i'm always working on it always trying to build myself up because i have to rely on my body now i want to take the time to give a shout out actually to canadian prepper he was the reason i pushed myself so hard he did a video a while back, should be a pop-up there for you, uh, Mad Max Workout. You need to be working out, guys. That right there got me back into it. Now, it took a while. It did, and it was hard. You're going to feel a lot better about yourself later on, but the first three days, you're going to hurt like hell. I'm going to tell you that. But you don't have to go to that extreme right off the bat. Start small and progress. That's how you do it. Change your dieting. Serving sizes matter. Counting your carbs, counting your calories, it matters. If you're trying to build muscle, you're counting that protein. I'm not a health fitness channel. I take it serious. I believe you need to push your body. But like when I do my outdoor survival videos, guys, when I'm out there training my courses and stuff, I have to have my body in shape. I know what it takes to push your body when people are dependent on you. I've had medical issues out in the field where I've had to pull people out of my class and we're talking about a two mile hike through the brush. That's carrying them or carrying their gear, whatever, I got to get these people out. So having your body in shape is highly important during SHTF. Case in point, here in uh, Florida, Hurricane Michael devastated this local area I'm at. There were reports of people having heart attacks and strokes, not from the heat, not from the power being out, from toting water from retention ponds that were a mile away from their house, taking a five gallon bucket, filling it up and carrying it back to their home because their body was not conditioning to even walk a mile, let alone tote a five gallon bucket full of water a mile. Please hear me on this. I'm not going at people. I want to encourage you to push your body, start small. Start walking for a while. Get your body in there. Get that circular, um, your, your heart and everything, your circular system. Get that worked. Then start branching out. You'll feel amazing later on. Now, there's more skills than this. All right. We're actually going to be starting up a new playlist um, Dutch oven cooking, cooking campfire. Reason being, everybody uses the stove or, unfortunately, microwave to cook their food. So what happens when your natural gas or your power is no longer existing? You can't get the service because grid's down or it's just gone. Now what? People's gonna be using campfires. It'll be everywhere. Do you know how to cook on a campfire? Most people say, yeah, I do. That's great. A lot of people don't. 
And the reason I say this is because I actually have people ask me for recipes on how to cook rice and what they need to be using rice, what they need to be using flour for. Hey, I bought all this stuff. What can I cook with it? Always purchase items you use. I've shown canned goods, dry goods. I've shown these things as a normal rotational stock, but you need to prep what you eat. Don't just buy stuff and don't ever use it. We put it in a rotational stock. Now, we do have long-term food storage stuff, guys, and there's a lot of YouTubers, a lot of bigger YouTubers. I know Canadian Preppers got his own line because he actually runs his own preparedness store, which is freaking awesome. They, he sells something different than I do. I have no problem with that. The products are there for your survival long-term SHTF. You're talking 25 years shelf life on many of these items. That is food that you can put back and stick away for somebody. When I was working on getting my family prepared, a lot of them are not preppers. So they don't want to deal with rotating stock out, mylar and rice and beans up. They don't want to deal with that at all. So to give me peace of mind, to get them safely secured until I can arrive to extract them out of location, we went with our, our affiliate for Patriots. 25 year shelf life. Put it in a tote form, they can stick it in a closet somewhere. We provided them with alternative power, a way of cooking, lighting, water filtration. That way I know they are safe, they have what they need until I can get to their location and pull them out. So these long-term food storage companies and stuff do have their place and I do support them. But get your <coughs> rice, your beans, all that stuff. Get that stuff mylar get it all sealed up first all right that's a rotational stock a fraction of a price of long-term food storage you can buy a year's supply of rice and beans flour pastas noodles pasta is noodles right yeah uh at a fraction of a cost and this is a normal rotational stock it will never go bad the reason i say it'll never go bad is because every time we cook dinner we pull from our stocks when we go to the store we buy a replacement we seal it up put it in our stock that's rotational stock. Your food would never go bad. Anyway, guys, definitely appreciate you coming out here, hanging out with me. To our new viewers, definitely appreciate you being here. I know I had a lot of support from the prepping community after our DEF CON 2 video where I released information that I had gotten. Everybody stepped up and showed support, and that was, that was amazing, guys. And for everyone that's here, awesome. I wanted, again, a special shout-out to Canadian Prepper. Dude, I've been watching you for a very long time, and I've told you that before. Love your channel. Um, the Survival Lily, I gotta say, it had me laughing. And I had somebody else comment, I'm just gonna call you Survival Lily. Uh, I love her channel. Now, when those two went and did a camp trip uh, with the kayaks and stuff, and I forget exactly where it was, I'm pretty sure it's in Canada. Freaking loved it. I wish I was, I would have had the opportunity to have been there. That was freaking awesome. So Survival Lily is another great channel, guys. If you have not been over there, definitely check that out. But Canadian Prepper, I appreciate it, man. Um, I know that you have been watching my channel. I haven't ever told people that because I, I can see the icon that shows, you know, when you subscribe. Very cool. Yeah, I'm smiling right now. <laughs> I appreciate it. I love your information. I love that you're able to bring information for us that we can actually look at it ourselves and make decisions on our preps. This is why I like his channel. Besides, when he first started out, guys, I used to watch every single video when he did his outdoor survival video showing you all kind of different skills. He still does that. Yeah. Not many preppers in today's society will show you anything. They like to talk to you. Having this information that he provides has really excelled our preparedness level. I can look at the information he's providing, I can check the backup on it, where he's getting his sources from, and then I can uh, prepare accordingly. And that's what you guys should do. Never freak out, never get scared when you see a headline. Take a look at the information. Register it. How is this gonna affect me? Stock up. We're preppers, we're always stocking up. So no matter what news comes our way, we're already stocked up. Just like the DEF CON 2 stuff. My advice to everybody, fill up your tanks, make sure your, your vehicles are full of gas, make sure your propane's topped off. That's not too much to ask for. Actually, we should always be doing that on a daily basis. Not once a month. On a daily basis, you need to make sure that you're topping up your tanks. All right, guys, definitely do appreciate you hanging out with me. And until next time, 
Y'all take care. Keep on prepping. Don't freak out. Look at the information, process the information, stack accordingly. Talk to y'all later.